Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Well, World Cup Finals is almost here. It's going to start this Thursday. I think test pass is on Wednesday. Our cars are on their way. Miles and Sean leave Tuesday. Get out there. Luke is already on his way. Going to go fast. Have some fun. Or possibly you're going to go to Las Vegas and go to SEMA. I believe it's also this week. And then in December, we're going to have Performance Race Industry Show which is a little more open to the public this year. So we've got some cool events this week and coming up. Things to go do that are motorsports related. And if you haven't had a chance to go to the PRI show and you can make your way to Indy, it will be cold, but it is definitely worth it. It's just really cool. The tools, the manufacturers, just everything that you want to see is there. Where SEMA seems to be more about underglow and what windshield wipers you have. PRI is what you use to build the car. So if you're a car guy, go to PRI. Anyway, we're going to talk a little bit more about VE and generating a VE table. Uh, I wanted to do one more episode on that, thanks to Troy's suggestion. So let's get right to it. This is the VE map that we ended with, more or less. You can see down here in the corner, down here. I didn't bother with below 40 kPa. We're not really too worried about that. This kind of establishes our idle section anyway. We're going to look more at the, the fun part in the middle. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this guy right here, which is the injector flow rate. Some people call it the injector global. It's the injector scaling, whatever number you want to call that. And also the dead time numbers, the latency right here injector offset is another name so in the last installment in episode one i said that as long as your injector data is accurate usually you can start with a fuel map like this but you might have to play with the numbers so now why would you do that it does it mean that the numbers down here are wrong or here or here or what, what's going on? Now, your ECU, if it's VE-based, technically should work on a pretty basic principle for the fuel model. But what happens is it's relative to what you're putting in there to make it all work. So that's why I said accurate injector data, but there's a problem. Injector data is different from manufacturer to manufacturer. Oh, and it gets worse. Some manufacturers use something called N-heptane and some use pump gas. So possibly these numbers here don't match what uh, manufacturer A to manufacturer B does. So we're gonna look at something here in the Infinity software. Now, I'm not throwing them under the bus at all. I like injector dynamics. They're very good injectors. Keep in mind, this is the numbers that AEM generated based on their experience, and they're just trying to get an initial map. This is just an example. Okay. Now, when we look at fuel, we have lots of different possibilities here. We can do E85. If you have pump E85, ethanol is considered... E98, we have flex fuel if that's enabled. Obviously, we covered gasoline. And if you look over here, it has specific gravity and stoichiometric. That's going to be for E0. So that's going to affect these numbers. And of course, we have methanol. Um, so every time you switch, let me look over here. See, 90.785, that's how I know that's E98. And if we look at E85, that value stoichiometric is going to be 9.8. Or 10.0, I guess, is what they have. Okay, close enough. 14.08 is E10, by the way. But something amazing happens when you have th these fuels. The viscosity of the fuel changes, and the flow rating changes, and how the injector reacts changes. So, how do you deal with that? Well, this is where you, as the prospective tuner or enthusiast, have to make some judgment calls, hopefully based on experience, 
but definitely common sense. Now keep in mind, common sense isn't common. But when you're tuning a car, you're dealing with either a substantial investment of your own or a substantial investment of somebody else's. Now, if you ended up making some polls and you look at the feedback and this highlighted area here starts looking more like this, I'm going to exaggerate it really massively, where you're seeing 120% VE at peak torque, and actually in the Haltech and the, the AM Infinity, these numbers will go to 200. So it's not truly VE like you would think of if you were in an engineering class. But your numbers that wide open to meet your target and keep your trims relatively close are 120% here, but you're still only 60 down here at idle. We're gonna have to start making some judgment calls. Can you leave it that way? Sure. I could just tell you that numbers are imaginary and it doesn't really matter because why would you go zero to 200? Formula One's 138% or 130% VE. The theoretical maximum, at least when I was in school, is 138%. Be that as it may, what could you do here? So we know that our numbers before had been 100. We ended up at 120. So that's a 20% change. Now, as a possibility, and this is where you have to see what it's doing, maybe you have your cruise numbers and your idle numbers, they ended up being perfect. By and large, that's controlled by this over here, by the injector offset, the latency, the dead time, whatever you want to call it. So if these numbers are right, you're going to have to do some fancy math if you want your VE table to look right. What I would do is I would drop this by 15 to 20% because that's going to bring these numbers from 120 back to 100, right? 120 down to 100. Going in reverse, it would be 16.6%. But if we do that, then that's going to change this because it's going to be lean the same amount. The trick Go over here and up that the 16% that you just took out or that you added in. Take 16% out of this. In so doing, yeah, because we're adding fuel, right? So that would make this 16% richer everywhere. Um, so take 16% out here because for the most part, the, the injector offset really is vacuum. It does contribute, but it's minimal in boost. So we can kind of ignore it. So that's one trick you could do to get these VE numbers a little more accurate. Now maybe you have big cams. These numbers might be a lot less anyway. I have a couple of examples where these numbers are more like like this. Down in the high 40s and and mid 40s to make the car idle. And then you end up bringing it over here, something like this in your cruise area. Engine speed's high enough that Cams are starting to work, so maybe the, VA, the VE isn't horrible. This part of the map, where your low boost and into boost ends up staying the same. So sometimes you're going to have to make sacrifices, because if you looked at an injector sheet and said, oh, this is what it is, sure, on what? Some, some companies use heptane. Most companies use heptane. Some use gasoline. But what are you running? Are you running gasoline? Are you running Q16? Are you running ethanol? Are you running Ignite Red? Which is ethanol, but it's a little bit different. So there's one more trick. If you know specifics about your fuel, and pretty much as far as I know, every manufacturer has this in their ECU, you can go in and change the specific gravity and the stoichiometric value to whatever matches the fuel. Now, I'm going to go for memory. I'm probably probably wrong, but I think Q16 is 13.3. It's way off. And its specific gravity, I think, is 0.77 something. We're going to do that. It is a gasoline-based fuel. It still says gasoline, but it has the asterisk showing that we have modified those values. 
and whammo kablammo, now your fuel map might look right. Maybe this isn't the 120 anymore. This still looks right where it was, where it was at the 60s, or close. Maybe you have to go up, you have to go down. Again, maybe you have to play with the latency just a little. you got to play with the flow numbers. And remember, your 1,000cc injector at 45 pounds is less um, by this calculation. It was going to change versus base pressure, so if you were at 60, sure, it's a 1,000cc it's a injector. So if you took 10% off, so the 750 becomes 675, that's 10% richer, because you're telling the computer it's 10% smaller than it actually is, so it's an easy way to cheat this. But also, you can put in accurate fuel data. You can, in most ECUs, use fuel temperature as part of this fuel model. Lots of ways to get more accurate. But in the end, you can kind of rely on the fact that maybe these numbers are going to be a little bit abnormal. They're going to be a little bit uh, imaginary. Maybe we got 105 here to make things work. Sometimes I've seen where, because of VVT, you might have you might have some weird ups and downs. Uh, this particular ECU does have two VE tables, and you can blend them back and forth between ethanol content. There's the other one, ethanol content, uh, cam timing, VTEC. You got a few options for how you can blend these. Um, a trick that I do is I use the fuel, the, I made the tab called VE fuel trim, but this is just fuel trim number one. It's a generic fuel trim. I can use that to fix some of the stuff that's wrong with the difference between gasoline and ethanol because primarily those big changes, actually let's look at an example, those big changes are really mostly in vacuum. Oops, one too far. Okay, and then... As you can see, I like to make jokes. Oh, whoops. We need the last one. Pedro, if you're watching, you're cool. Okay. Here's an example. Mostly in vacuum, right? 100 kPa and down. Versus ethanol content. It wanted to idle somewhere in here. Light tip in. I had to pull more fuel because the injector data doesn't account for ethanol as accurately where I could have done it if I blended these tables. This is one that exists as part of the base map. And you can see to me, this is imaginary numbers. It's down in the forties here and 115 up here. So all of this stuff would have had to gotten changed. This isn't the actual VE map. This is the actual VE map where his cams turbo, his turbo doesn't even start to spool till 6,500 RPM. So you can see some of the stuff that I've been telling you ends up being accurate. The 100 out the top, peak power was, I think, 80, 8,200, so right in the 90s. This is an example of a big cam car. Those numbers are realistically in the 50s because it doesn't idle down here this low. It's, it's up in here in the 60s and 70s, so 50%. You can kind of see what was going on in cruise. It made a, a little bit of a wave. But in the end, when we get to the fuel trims, where we're at, 170 degree coolant temp, VE is pretty much spot on. Target AFR had moved a little bit. That's probably just a blip. Pulling 1% fuel. Pretty close. 45 pounds base pressure, 84 pounds out the top, 83% injector duty cycle. Car made 771 on this pull. So, some tricks and tips for VE tuning and setting up your fuel model, uh, independent of what ECU you're running. Obviously, I just prefer to use the Infinity because the software is easy to navigate for videos, and it's what I use. You kind of see I could do some smoothing in here. I didn't really spend a bunch of time on that. I need to go back and do that. He runs above that line anyway. So some of the transitions in 
that shows that a tuner's job is never done. We need to we need to come look at things occasionally. Because good chance that it's just something easy like that. Smooths the lines out just a little bit. Still has a sharp change, but not quite as bad. Anyway, guys, hope you're all doing good. We'll talk to you later. Bye.